This is Ha Jinping Mei is read Chapter 26 The Embroidered Portrait. Lai Wenger was deported to Shuzhou. And Song Huilian was ashamed to commit suicide the original version of the poem. Lai Wenger was deported to Shuzhou. And Song Huilian was ashamed to commit suicide. 1. Pan Jinlian B.S. Song Huilian First Round Pan Jinlian finally couldn't hold back and wanted to take action. The direct reason was that Lai Wang declared that he wanted to kill her, and she wanted to actively defend. The indirect reason was that Wu Yunyang and Meng Yulu didn't care. Pan Jinlian was high-spirited and upright. Who would go to hell if I didn't? Go to hell. It turns out that Simon King and Song Huilian committed adultery. Simon King was lustful and Song Huilian was fond of money. As long as Simon King did not change his mind and Song Huilian did not get pregnant, everyone could get what they needed. No harm would be done to any living beings, and the relationship would be very stable. But when Lai Wang returned and made trouble while drunk, Pan Jinlian had the best opportunity. That night, Pan Jinlian cried and punched her pillow, and reported three things to Simon King. First, Lai Wang already knew that you stole his wife. Second, Lai Wang stole your concubine son Zue. Third, Lai Wang exposed our shortcomings. He said that we poisoned Wuhan University, that he saved our lives by going to Tokyo, and that he wanted to kill us. Simon King understands it this way, you know the first thing if you know it. The second thing of stealing Sun Zue must be dealt with, but we know that he is not willing to publicize his cuckolding. So he just beaten him up and detained him he was only allowed to go to the stove with his family and his wife, and he was not allowed to see anyone else. He was not expelled or sold off. The third matter seemed serious, but he actually didn't believe that Lai Wang really had such courage, so he asked Song Huilian for his opinion. This gave Song Huilian a chance to redeem herself. According to my analysis, Song Huilian has three strategies at this time, upper, middle and lower. Best idea, if she really wants to be the seventh mother, then take this opportunity to kill Lai Wang, this is how Pan Jinlian killed Wuhan University. The next best idea, if she doesn't want to be the seventh mother at all, then she should stabilize her husband and find opportunities to have an affair in the future. This is equivalent to the compromise conditions proposed by Wuhan University back then save me, and I will do nothing when Wusong comes back. Explain. The middle strategy, preserve hope without harming Lai Wang, I hope Simon King will send Lai Wang to Tokyo to give him a bribe of 1,000 taels. And then go to Hangzhou to do business. Jin can wait for the opportunity to ascend to the position of Ken Yang. Retreat and go back to be Lai Wang's wife. And Lai Wang can naturally do business. Making a lot of private money is not. The best thing to do is to squeeze into the power class with all your heart. Although the prospects are good, there are many difficulties and challenges. She lacks courage. Of course, she is not bad in nature and does not want to kill Lai Wang because of herself. The last option is to give up and live a good life. This is easy, but Song Huilian has reached this point. So naturally she will not be convinced and choose the last option. So in the end, she chose the middle strategy. On the one hand, she defended Lai Wang in every possible way. And on the other hand, she suggested that he let him go out again. How we played before, we will play again in the future. Perhaps in Song Huilian's view, this strategy was the perfect outcome for her, Simon King, and Lai Wang to achieve a win-win situation. However, the problem is precisely that wanting everything means that you may not get anything. Simon King originally agreed, but there was a fatal flaw in this strategy, and Pan Jinlian saw through it. She couldn't wait for nightfall again, so she went straight to Simon King in broad daylight and took action most decisively. The question she raised was that the 1,000 tails of silver was used to express favors for others. What would happen if Lai Wang abducted him? No one else has thought about this issue, and Simon King would not think so. Only Pan Jinlian has succeeded in using the heart of a villain to judge the belly of a villain. This is what Lai Wang thinks. When Lai Wang heard about the business, he was immediately overjoyed. And when he heard that he was not allowed to go, he was immediately furious. Obviously, he had already had the idea that Song Huilian would not come back, and Sun Zue would not be able to take her with him. Well, now that I have money by my side, why not run away? 
The solution proposed by Pan Jinlian was, if you cut the grass and remove the roots, the sprouts will no longer grow and send him away from home. Pan Jinlian figured out Song Huilian's weakness of giving up the best strategy and choosing the middle strategy in an attempt to protect Lai Wang and hit the nail on the head. Very despicable, isn't it? No, she also understands politics. She wants to kill Lai Wang, but her final goal is Yu Ximin King, don't worry. He is also devoted to his wife. That is, as long as you ruthlessly get Lai Wang away, Song Huilian will be with you. Simon King was of course very happy when he heard this result. But he didn't know that Pan Jinlian was just picking up the rebel general that Song Huilian had given up. The first round of duel between Pan Jinlian and Song Huilian is coming to an end. How Simon King deals with Lai Wang will determine the outcome of both sides. It must be said that writing public cases is not the strength of Jinping Mei, or even its shortcoming. The plot of Lai Wang's case in the storybook is cliched completely imitating water margin and is an interesting. In the picture book, it is also weird. Although it describes a case of drunken Lai Wang listening to a woman's voice and going to catch an adulterer, however, it has not been explained who the woman who summoned Lai Wang to catch the adulterer was. It could not be Sun Zue, because rape itself is not a fact. It cannot be Yuxiao, because Yuxiao and Song Huilian were together when the incident occurred, and it was also lost. Simple and hasty, I have the money in hand to do business in Wang Wang, and I am already full of joy, so why bother to catch an adulterer? Therefore, would better just focus on the special features of Jin Ping Mei. So far, the first round of duel ended with Zhu Wang being framed and arrested and sent to prison, and Pan Jinlian won a complete victory. 2. Pan Jinlian vs Song Huilian, second round. Lai Wang was rested. The evidence was conclusive, and both the man and the stolen were obtained. Song Huilian begged for mercy in court. Dad, this is what you did for a living. He came here to look for me. How could I treat him as a thief? I kept your six bags of silver intact. How could you exchange them for nothing? How could you bury someone alive? We also need justice. Why is he? Why are you just because of him? Beat him up. Now you are dragging him and sending him there? This is reasoning with Simon King. Simon King originally followed Pan Jinlian's wishes and clearly framed Lai Wang. Although you didn't choose the best option, didn't I help you choose it? What else can you say? Simon King just said. What does it have to do with you? It's none of your business. When Song Huilian saw that Xiaozi was unable to reason, she became emotional. Father is so cruel. You don't look at the monk's face or the Buddha's face. I'm saying that. So you don't care about me, even though he drinks wine. It doesn't matter. This is a challenge to Simon King. Why do you insist on choosing the best option? According to Pan Jinlian's wishes? I beg you so much. Why don't you listen to the strategy that kills three birds with one stone? Simon King was forced to panic. Why did he talk about it now? He just pulled her away. Lai Wang was sent to Tixing Yuan. Where Simon King would serve in the future, Jia Tixing, the boss of Tixing Yuan, was very considerate to Simon King, and beat Lai Wang until his skin was torn and his flesh was dripping with blood. Simon King also ordered his servants not to provide him with bedding or food, not to hurt him to death, but also to freeze him to death, starved him to death. It can be said that Lai Wang's life has reached the edge of the cliff. He has long understood that his fate is in the hands of Simon King and to women. He can only pray that Song Huilian will make a last effort for him. Song Huilian really worked hard. She seized the opportunity to be alone with Simon Singh. You can look at the slave's face and let him out after two days. It doesn't matter whether you teach him how to do business or not. Once he comes out, I will teach him to stop drinking. I will let him go as far as you want. Does he dare to go? Otherwise, if you find it uncomfortable, just find a wife for him. That's all. I, Chang Yuan, am no longer his. It can be said that Song Huilian analyzed all the situations she could think of, and she made her wish to the lowest point. 1. Lai Wang has been captured. Whether he was beaten or not, forget it. Don't care. Let him be released while he is still alive. 2. If you are doing business in Lai Wang, might you kidnap someone and run away? Then don't let him do business. 
He can do whatever he wants. 3. When Lai Wang drinks, he behaves mischievously and threatens to kill someone. I will ask him to stop drinking. If you are still worried, drive him away from a distance. 4. Lai Wang is still a thorn in your heart. Do you feel uncomfortable seeing him in the future? Find him a wife and let him go away. I don't want him anymore. I can do whatever you want. You can imagine how happy Simon King was when he heard such a statement. My sweetheart, you are right. Tomorrow I will buy a house in Kiao's house, clean up three houses to live with you, and move to your place. The two of us can play freely. I'll kill you. I'll write a post tomorrow and tell Mr. Jia to let him out. Living in three rooms means that Song Huilian has truly become the seventh mother. Just letting him out means that Song Huilian's plan will really come true. If the matter ends here, it can be said that Song Huilian has completely fought back and turned defeat into victory. However, the fatal weakness in Song Huilian's nature, frivolity, betrayed her again. It would be too easy to show off your erotic words to the maids and daughters-in-law behind the scenes. The intelligence was leaked and the opponent's severe attack was about to come. Pan Jinlian, who received information from Meng Yulu, charged into the battle again and went directly to Simon King. She said something extremely sharp. Her general meaning included the following points. 1. Song Huilian only loves Lai Wang, so she wants to save Lai Wang. 2. If Lai Wang is released, you will not be able to have Song Huilian, because if you release Lai Wang, it will be ugly at home. Even if one marries another and the other becomes a concubine, what if they meet in the future? Logically speaking, these two points are not part of Song Huilian's plan, right? Song Huilian has already thought about it. If you just send him away, for example, give him a hundred tails of silver to go back to his hometown, he won't disagree. Then, won't the ugliness be gone? So the key is that Pan Jinlian has one last trick which is what we have repeatedly emphasized. Talk about politics. 3. If Lai Wang leaves and spreads the bad news about your master and servant's adultery, won't your reputation be ruined? Do the wives, concubines, and servants at home think highly of you? The power of politics lies in its benevolence, righteousness, and morality. I am doing all this for your reputation. Since you want Song Huilian, you can just stop doing it and kill people to silence them, and you can feel at ease. Lai Wang originally claimed that he wanted to kill Pan Jinlian, but he didn't seem to have the courage to really take action. Instead, Pan Jinlian pressed on step by step and finally sent him to a desperate situation. Originally, Lai Wang had already survived, but because of Song Huilian's little because of his frivolity. He was sent back to the cliff again and thrown directly from the cliff. Fortunately, he had accumulated Yin Si, and Kong Mu, whose name was Yin Si, gave him a life, saving straw and changed his place of deportation to Shuzhou, his place of origin. Lai Wang escaped with his life, and was on the road in desolation, without even a little money or rice for travel expenses. Simon King also wanted the whole family to hide Song Huilian's news. The second one-on-one -on -one duel is over, and Pan Jin Lian won again. 3. Death of Song Huilian As the saying goes, a man is not guilty but he is guilty of carrying a jade. Wu Daling, who was pregnant with a good woman, is a lesson learned from the past. Lai Wang's personal tragedy definitely deserves our sympathy. It's just that I have always believed that although there are many, many poor characters in novels, there are also many, many good and bad characters. When we appreciate the interest and beauty of novels, we can have sympathy, admiration, and hatred. However, personal emotions do not need to and should not become a universal emotion, let alone some kind of moral preaching. Standard, what belongs to the novel itself should stay in the world of the novel. When we want to go beyond the novel to appreciate the interest and beauty in it, I think it should be more about realizing a dialogue with the author through the interpretation of the text. The bad news of Lai Wang finally failed to contain the anger, and Song Huilian burst into tears. To die, just want to take you far away from home. It's so hard to trap you. It's unknown whether you will live or die on the road. It's like I'm under a vet. How do you know? After crying, he hanged himself. However, he failed to hang himself and was rescued. However, Song Huilian, 
who had tasted the taste of death, no longer had the coquettishness and frivolity of the past, and was filled with resentment and resentment. She vented vigorously to Simon Singh, Dad, you are such a good man. You did such a good job hiding it from me. You turned out to be a trick executioner, used to burying people alive, and you even killed them and you still saw the purpose of the funeral. You only coaxed me all day long. Today I said he would be released, and tomorrow I would say he would be released. He should be released only if he is well behaved. If you want to deport him, say something to me, and then he will be deported far away in a dark and unventilated place. You must also follow the laws of nature. You, I believe that people can pull off such desperate tricks and pull off traps, and you still hide it from me. In this regard, Simon King had no choice but to comfort her with a submissive smile. My child, it's none of your business. That guy caused trouble, so I sent him away. Don't worry, I have my own place. Later, he sent food, and then he asked Yu Xiao and others to watch her 24 hours a day, eat and sleep with her, and give her kind words. Perhaps he hoped that time could heal the wounds, and hoped that time would pass and everyone would tacitly relive the old dream again. However, the vicious Pan Jinlian did not give her opponent a chance. At this critical moment, she actually thought of the character that was almost forgotten by readers, Sun Zue. On the one hand, she told Sun Zue that Song Huilian was the one who informed Lai Wang about having an affair with you, so Simon King beat you. On the other hand, she told Song Huilian that Sun Zue despised her for raising a man, which led to Lai Wang being sent away and deported. So there was hatred for a while. It's finally Li Zhao's birthday. Although her birthday is not important to us, it is important to the characters in the story. Because of her birthday, everyone went to a party. And Song Huilian, who was under strict supervision, got a chance to be alone. At this time, Sun Zue came to pick a fight. Then there will be all kinds of contempt, all kinds of quarrels, all kinds of swearing, until a big fight. After the commotion, Song Huilian, who was deeply humiliated and in pain, once again silently hang herself from a beam. And fortunately, this time she succeeded. Good things in the world are not strong, and colorful clouds are easy to scatter and glass is fragile. For, whose fault? Whose fault? Song Huilian is dead. On the night of the Lantern Festival, she was unparalleled in her beauty, leading the way. On the day of the Qingming Festival, she soared into the sky, envying the world. However, the 25-year-old mood for love has passed away like this. Whose fault? Whose fault? As mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, most of the time, people blame Pan Jinlian for their sins. If I don't go to hell, who will? As the analysis of the first three sections of this chapter said, Pan Jinlian defeated Song Huilian twice in singles, at the last moment. He borrowed Sun Zue's hand to give her a fatal blow just like Cao Cao borrowed his sword, to kill Mi Hang. Therefore, Song Huilian was killed by Pan Jinlian. Is I truly, we have previously analyzed that Song Huilian had three strategies, upper, middle and lower, and could choose freely. She rejected the lower strategy, gave up the best strategy, and chose the middle strategy. This was a compromise between her emotional dreams and her rational bottom line. Pan Jinlian was sure of this and knew that she was not willing to harm Lai Wang and benefit herself, so she became ruthless and attacked Lai Wang however. What if Song Huilian went back on her word? What if she accepted Pan Jinlian's arrangement and chose the best option? Pan Jinlian really lost her husband and lost the army. The blame for Lai Wang's death was all her fault. Will Song Huilian regret it? I think she will, as mentioned before, when she lowered her demands to the minimum just asking for Lai Wang to live freely and well. She almost became the Qin Yang. And when she failed again, she even said that after trying the taste of death once, if she accepts the fact that Lai Wang was framed by Pan Jinlian, she admits that she has worked hard for Lai Wang, and there is no debt or regret. Then she can naturally become the Qin Yang with peace of mind. The reason why she didn't do this was because she had the biggest knot in previous section. We quoted the passages from Song Huilian before and after her first suicide. Among them, I feel like I am under a vat and if you deport him, just say something to me probably shows her psychology. 
The author's comment about her suicide was I can't bear it. What was she angry about? Angry that she said nice things to Simon King like that. But Simon King never took her seriously. Angry that she was kept in the dark like a plaything. So this heart not is. If this is a game and you don't let me participate, at least you can give me the right to watch. What's the point of standing on the sidelines of a play that I can't even be a supporting role in? My hypothesis is, if there was no such knot, if Simon King really made it clear to her, Song Huilian might really be able to let go of her reservation and become a Kinyang. Therefore, Pan Jinlian was nothing more than a lucky adventure. What's more, how could she disregard her heart and be sure that Song Huilian would choose the extreme method of suicide? Song Huilian's suicide contained many complex emotions. There was guilt for Lai Wang. She had tried hard, but without her greed at the beginning, there would have been no subsequent results. There was also disappointment for Simon King, and she almost put herself to death. The whole thing was sold, only to find out that she was lighter than a feather. Her beauty, her adultery with her master, all her hopes and efforts were in vain. It turned out that she had no say in this game. As she cried again and again, Song Huilian may have felt that her own value was completely disillusioned. She originally thought that she was standing on a high branch and would soon be able to ascend to the power class and become the same people as her wives and concubines. However, in the Simon family, everyone was waiting amidst the false laughter and snide rebuke. She suddenly realized that she was still the daughter-in-law who secretly had sex in the cave. No one really wanted to put her to death and get rid of her quickly, but she could not bear the weight of life and finally committed suicide. Therefore, I personally believe that Song Huilian's death was ultimately caused by herself, and Pan Jinlian only played the role of an accomplice at most. But what is ridiculous is that some modern commentators blame Song Huilian's tragedy on the evil old society and call her suicide an awakening of morality or a flash of humanity. Could it be that Song Huilian wanted to exchange her life for the moral affirmation of others? If she never committed suicide, didn't want to commit suicide, or refused to commit suicide, then she was an extremely despicable, extremely shameless, an extremely lewd little person, right? If she didn't die, she wouldn't be able to become famous. If she wanted to gain praise from others, wouldn't she have to die? Although the story is fictional and the characters are fabricated, how can a scholar read like this? 5. Fanning the flames of Meng Yulu Wu Yunyang watches from the other side. We have said before that Song Huilian's story is just a preview of the competition for Favor Territory 3.0. Careful readers will definitely find that Li Ping'er has no chance to appear in these two times. The reason is very simple, because Song Huilian is helping her appear. Today's Pan Song battle will be a large-scale Pan Li battle in the future. Click on the protagonists of the war, and let's take a look at the performance of the two people hiding behind in map 3. 0. Let's talk about Meng Yulu first. Meng Yulu once said when Song Huilian was in a state of triumph, What can you say about Chu? The word Chu made Song Huilian run away in shame. This was the gap between the power class and the servants. Later, when Pan Jinlian told the story of the adultery between the master and the servant, she once again said, the angry thief is sitting there, and he seems to have the same idea when he sees me, but he can't afford to wait. Who knew he had this account behind his back? The so-called can't wait to get up means that Song Huilian felt that she had the status of being a concubine and was of the same generation as Pan Meng and others, so she was reluctant to get up when she saw people coming. But she was limited to a real role, so she had to get up slightly to greet people, obviously. Meng Yulu has always been worried about this. When Song Huilian was feeling complacent about Qin Yang again, Meng Yulu got the news immediately and forwarded it to Pan Jinlian the next time how, dot dot how. This how is inevitably another exaggeration, and finally made a vicious conclusion. Just like you and me, Zhang Zi. The eldest sister just doesn't care, so to say that Meng Yulu doesn't compete for favor is really an injustice to her. These few words have already Meng Yulu's thoughts are clear, obviously. We will discuss how to argue with other people later. Now we have to add Song Huilian, which is inevitable. If Wu Yunyang doesn't care, then she will ask Pan Jinlian to come forward. 
You and I general, come on. You and I have always been a united front. Under her instigation, Pan Jinlian expressed that she would fight Song Huilian. With this attitude, Meng Yulu was finally happy. And she gave a heartfelt smile, I am a coward. I dare not provoke him, see if you have the ability, and he pestered her. If Pan Jinlian gave Song Huilian a powerful blow later, then Meng Yulu's wonderful pass was the best assist. Look at Wu Yunyang again. Big Sister Doesn't Care not only expresses Wu Yunyang's active defense against Meng Yulu's tricks, but also perhaps Wu Yunyang fully demonstrated her endurance, and she even used Meng Yulu to stimulate Pan Jinlian. Pan Jinlian stepped forward to do this. Not only would she have zero risk, but she would also be able to earn high returns and earn a good reputation as a virtuous person. For example, when Ziman King framed Lai Wang, it was obviously intentional. Since it was intentional, it was impossible to be dissuaded. Wu Yunyang happened to rise to the occasion at this time she usually remained silent and was refuted with confidence. On the surface, Wu Yunyang was well-intentioned and did not want to repay the loss of being mute. However, in a blink of an eye, she was facing Meng Yulu and others. When people call her Ninetale Vixen, it goes without saying that everyone knows that she is talking about Pan Jinlian. Obviously, this rising into the face of difficulties won her a righteous reputation. On the one hand, she suppressed Pan Jinlian, and on the other hand, she attracted Song Huilian to a certain extent if she really became a Kin Yang. This prediction is not very favorable. 6. The Tragic Ending Song Huilian finally died, ending herself with the foot wrap wrapped around her beautiful golden lotus. Like fireworks, her once gorgeous life passed away with her beautiful golden lotus. Her lover, who had exchanged her body for it, never made a skirt until her death. And her cruel lover, who placed all her hopes on her, who was once extremely obsessed with her body, just said coldly, he would a clumsy woman. It turns out she is not blessed. He burned her body without a trace. In an era when only poor people like Wuhan University would be cremated, he used suicide to express his ambition and the angry Song Huilian just ended up like this. Song Huilian died, and her old father had just appeared, Song Ren whose homophonic pronunciation is give away, used the corpse to extort money, and actually claimed that Song Huilian was disobedient to chastity, which made readers laughable. However, Song Ren was beaten to death by Simon King, but he was also sorrow. If Simon King treated Song Huilian like jewels from beginning to end, then we might have a different relationship. However, Simon King was just playing along from beginning to end. The first thing he said when he saw Bai Si was, every time you come back after being burned, if you didn't read the context, who would have known that what they burned was the body of a beautiful woman who died at the age of only 25. Simon King was furious at Song Ren for preventing his cremation and used his connections to beat Song Ren almost to death. Compared with the 20 or 40 tales sent to the funeral by the slaves in Jia's mansion, in a dream of red mansions, the plum in the golden vase shows the true horror of this world, the other side of death, as a unique scenery in Jinping Mei, is written by the author in a calm manner, but it always makes people sigh with pity. Just as Song Ren's death is worthy of sympathy, but his relying on the corpse to rely on others also feels like he brought it upon himself. All of this cannot be judged simply morally. It can only be said that they are all people in the floating world, and each has his own sorrow. For us, we can gain more insights after closing the book, which will live up to the author's painstaking efforts. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.